Hello. Um, okay, so welcome to the post -inter review, Cultural Commons. It's really great <coughs> to see so many of you. Uh, you're still here, actually. Uh, that's very good. Uh, last day of the festival, last conference event. And uh, it's a marathon event, two and a half hours, with lots of exciting guests and even a mini keynote speech. Um, this is actually part of an ongoing project of Transmediale called the post Review, which was initiated last year in, a ve in foreign, uh, actually a kind of a think tank, policy, cultural funding, uh, and related to digital culture discussion that we did in cooperation with the uh, federal office, the f equivalent of the foreign ministry here in Germany. And that project on a whole, I would say it, the idea was to gather, and I read a little bit from the, the text, uh, gather exper experts from the fields of digital culture, art, policy, curating and research, to discuss shifting forms of cultural practice, uh, organizations of the economy, as well as of politics in a post-digital world. Sounds very big. But, and that was all discussed initially in a one-day review summit that was, as I said, organized by Transmedial in cooperation with the German Federal Foreign Office. And it was also hosted here at the House de Couture de Welt. It was on the 10th of November last year. We used this term of the post-digital that was actually discussed at length in the last Transmediale Festival, Afterglow, uh, in a very s simple sense. Um, on the one hand, it's this basically after digitization, society after digitization, but it's also a term that in, in the same spirit of postmodernism or postcolonial perhaps stands also for a speculative and critical, also far perhaps beyond the hype, I would say, engagement with art and cultural production in a world where digitization has a, had a global impact on cultural practices, organization, on economy, on politics. And we had more than 30 um, German and international experts from different fields, from uh, dealing with these different topics, transdisciplinary topics of uh, the post review. We had a number of working groups and discussion sessions where the purpose was to initiate um, or to actually come up with different ideas of what could be done uh, today in this post-digital uh, condition in the field of digital culture, the whole heritage of critical net cultures in Europe, of media art. Uh, they find themselves in a very different situation today where basically every uh, institution has kind of a digital uh, program or has the goal to uh, have an active uh, role within digital culture. It was a very open discussion. A lot of different things came out of it. Uh, one very concrete thing is a, a short um, report. There will be a long report too, but the short report, the so-called executive summary. Um, and this executive summary um, stated uh, a number of kind of uh, topics that we thought from the uh, different comments and from the different statements that were made were worth following up on. And one of them was this topic of the cultural commons. And to quote perhaps, uh, yeah, to quote that report, um, in a networked and information oriented society, much cultural work takes place through collaborative forms that build digital commons and through new forms of commoning. Resource and knowledge building that relates to economic, social, as well as cultural development. More specifically, now I'm not quoting anymore, uh, this is important uh, topic uh, within culture policy today, especially in a digital or this post-digital context, because there's this strong tendency, I think, to, to stress innovation. I mean, we heard this also earlier today in the Internet of Things discussion, how uh, um, strong the innovation paradigm is, also now in this new field of ICT, uh, information communication technologies and the arts. Um, so I think something that was also very important in this first meeting was uh, the discussion about uh, alternative set of vocabularies and working methodologies that in specifically in relation to the culture commons 
uh, uh, perhaps can start to develop another language and another set of practices than those that are only predicated on this innovation paradigm. Not to say that innovation cannot also be appropriated and used perhaps in different uh, critical or disruptive ways, but um, commons is also a chance to develop uh, cultural resources that are not predicated on this more competitive uh, climate uh, that is often fostered through focusing also uh, only on innovation. Uh, so we have had a lot of discussions already in the festival about commons actually. I'm not going to make like a historical or anything a discussion about commons now, but I want to refer to a few positions already through the festival week. week. So we had for example uh, artists open source who came up with the term ubiquitous commons to speak about commons in a datafied society. They were working with claiming flows of data, claiming them as something to be seen uh, as a common resource that you should be able to use for yourself for different purposes and not only be stored by corporations or the government. Then on the contrary, we had somebody like Evgeny Mor Morozov who didn't speak about commons directly, but in the panel on ca algorithms, he was speaking about uh, actually that we shouldn't focus on algorithms and, and how to da make data more transparent or accessible, but we should scale up from the technological level to go directly to the transformation or even seizing of power. So he was speaking actually about the change of on ownership in society, ownership of institutions. Um, that would of course also then lead to a redistribution of the commons. Yet another notion of the commons is a more processual, processual based in cultural practice of uh, cultural practices of sharing. And this was, I think, well demonstrated by the feminist uh, technology workshops held here at Transmediale under the heading of commoning the networks. So I think what we'll be discussing here today is probably all these facets of the commons, but with this specific idea in mind or perspective of the cultural commons, um, and also how might this kind of unfold in the context of digital culture, uh, which actors, which institutions, which practices are involved. Um, therefore, we have invited a number of respondents and also a, an initial uh, impulse a mini keynote by, by Nishan Shah. Um, yeah, I shouldn't say too much more. Um, I would like to say something though about this innovation uh, critique that uh, I think it's urgent today in this uh, context of the industry 4.0, which is like a term that's being pushed in, in Germany um, uh, um, to somehow formulate also uh, from the from kind of cultural institutions and from practices, uh, practitioners, um, alternatives to that. And that is not the same thing as a sharing economy or a creative, uh, uh, creative economy or a creative industries. Um, so perhaps the hope here is that cultural commons can help to build a discourse and methodologies of shared value from within artistic, cultural and civil society practices. Um, and in this sense it relates to the capture all uh, theme of Transmediale 2015 in that it tries this discussion to look for the blind spots in the drive towards optimizing value extraction from all fields of life and instead to develop alternative or translocalized and transitory value systems. So how does actors, how, how do actors in art technology and social change intersect or work transversely with each other and contributing to this building or of this possible, hopefully, notion of cultural commons. Um, okay, so in all its complexity, the idea of building cultural commons here today, I think, is found then more in this processual perspective, uh, a commoning that is not a static entity, although it can still be seen as a resource, but not in the sense of this uh, bounded resource that you can just use, which is kind of one definition of commons. Uh, but something that has to be kept alive by its practitioners uh, and not, shouldn't be allowed to be foreclosed by two specific actors, be they the state, corporations, or specific interest groups, all the while they can be useful uh, by these entities. So cultural commons can in this sense be understood as mechanisms for maintaining cultural diversity within a post-digital institution and for supporting non-standardized cultural practices as exemplified in some artist activist practices that very often do not play out in traditional fields of cultural practice. Um, yes, let me come to the end. 
I've already said this. So, I think the questions here today, to say, say it finally, would it not be better if we, through culture commons, could build shared languages and methodologies of practices that do not require that the starting point of post-digital culture is always the quasi subsumption of art and culture to dominant economical models? This is the question that I posed to the respondents, uh, and they each, from their specific products, will try to uh, respond or criticize uh, and make this more concrete. And first up, invited, uh, we invited Nishant Shah to give um, kind of an uh, impulse mini keynote for the session here today. So he'll do a longer statement here at the lectern. And after that, we'll take some questions from you. And then everybody who's part of the whole panel here will take a seat and we will make short statement from, from each participant and try to bring you into the discussion. So later on, we really want to have the lights a bit more up uh, and have, even though it's very challenging in this venue to have a fluid discussion, uh, we will try to, unless we are very much over time, to bring you in also throughout. Because one of the ideas with this event was actually to connect to the local network also in Berlin. I don't know how many came from the resource network, but um, since we have this kind of uh, very international series of uh, projects and practitioners and institutional representatives and so on on the stage, so there was a very good moment uh, to connect it to the network of product spaces and researchers and curators in Berlin that have been participating in Transmediales all year network uh, projects uh, and yeah, basically because there the discussion has often also been on the conditions of cultural production today and the state of digital culture in the city. So hopefully some of you are here and can also engage with these people that are here. Okay, so um, I'd like to introduce Nishant Shah. So he's a professor for culture and aesthetics at, uh, of new media at the Ufana University in Lüneburg. Um, and uh, that in his products here, there, he also works um, as a knowledge partner with, with HIVOS uh, in the Netherlands, an NGO. He's a founder or, or co-founder, I should say, of the Center for Internet and Society in Bangalore, India. And his work is at the intersections of digital politics, uh, gender and sexual identities, and cyber cultures. Uh, I would like to invite Nishant Shah to come on stage and make his statement. Thank you.